Welcome back to another video and today we're gonna play with some sound settings. Uh, what we are gonna have by the end of this video is so we can play some sounds. You can hear in the noise in the background we have some music. We will be able to change its volume. Turn it off you can see in the, here in the background we have some ambient noises, some wind. We can change the volume of the wind as well and also we have some explosions. So for this video I'm going to use some of the starter content and in the starter content folder we have a folder called audio and here we have a bunch of sounds. We have some music, we got some ambient wind noises, we got some ex explosions so we're going to be using those. So the first thing that we need to do is kind of kind of like group these up into specific categories so I'm gonna have like music ambient noises and some effect noises so for every single one of these categories we need a thing called sound class so let's I'm gonna right click right here and I'm gonna go to the sounds and classes and select sound class and first one I'm gonna call SFX ambient uh, the grammar might not be correct but that's besides the point then I will duplicate this one and I will call this SFX music and I'm gonna have one for the effects and we need a thing that's gonna combine all of these together so again I'm gonna right click go to the sounds and we need to add a sound class mix and this is going to allow us to mix the sound volumes and change the properties for for our classes so let's open up our sound mix I called my new sound mix and inside of here we have the sound classes and we have three of those right now so let's add three entries to this array let's open up these entries and for the sound classes let's select our classes so we have the ambient we have the effects and we have the music as you can see here we can by default already change some of the properties we can change the volume pitch and some other options in this video we are only going to change volume but for the rest of these things it's basically the same idea we simply want to change the values that are stored in this class so that's all for this one so we can close that now the last thing for us left to do here is set the classes to the specific sounds so I'm gonna use the starter wind number five and if we open that up we can select a class so this is our ambient noises so I'm gonna save that then let's see we have the explosion one that's gonna be my effects and then I will also have the starter music being the SFX uh, music there we go so that's all that's needed to do for us now let's go and actually set things up so I will go to my UI settings widget which we created in the previous video when we did the graphics part but well you don't have to necessarily watch the previous video because nothing really is gonna be needed from that video the only thing that will be needed is the apply button which is just a regular button and yeah that's basically all so what I will do here is let's see so I want to duplicate one of these sections so a horizontal box and then inside of here I will delete the buttons that I have in there and what I will add is a thing called slider and this is going to allow us to adjust the volume so let's add that to the horizontal box let's make sure we adjust the alignment so something like six there we go let's change the text so this is going to be our ambient and I will rename my slider so this is gonna be the ambient slider then let's duplicate this horizontal box two more times because we need two more of these there we go so this is going to be our effects and the slider is going to be the effects slider and then uh, actually I renamed the wrong thing I need to put this in the content there we go and then this content is going to be the music and the slider is going to be our music slider so basically only the slider names are important so that we know which is which so now we have our three sliders and the apply button that's all good now what we need to do is go to our save game so that we can actually store these settings so that every time we launch the game these would get loaded the ones that we have set previously I already have a game save from the graphics video but if you don't have one right click go to your blueprint class and then look for the save game and this is the one that I was using so as you can see the child is the save game setting so create this one 
and open it up. You don't need anything that's already inside of this blueprint. This is all for the graphics. But for the sounds, what we need is I'm going to add a new variable and I'm going to call this, let's call this sounds volumes. And I will store all of those values inside of this single variable. And so the type is needed to be a float since the volume uses a float value. And let's make this into an array so that we can hold three values because we have three classes for the sounds. And then we also need to add those three array elements. I'm going to set all of those to one because by default, well, one is going to be the max volume, zero is going to be the no volume whatsoever. And once we have that, save that, close it, and we don't need anything else from the save. Now back in our widget, we can now go to our graph and let's first, first let's work on the construction. So look for your event construct. And once we construct the widget, we first want to set the base sound mix and we want to set our select our mix class. So I have my new sounds mix. So if you didn't watch the previous video about the graphics, make sure you copy this what's over here. We use a does save exist node check to check if the save exists and we specify a slot. The slot name is very important. We're going to use that throughout the whole thing. You can type whatever you want in here, but you need to reuse what you've typed here. So then we're going to do a if branch check to see if the save game exists. And if, if it does, then we are loading this. So again, make sure to use the same slot name. Then we're going to cast to that save and as that save. So this is for the graphics again. But if you don't want that, if you only want the sounds, then from the save, what we want to do is get our sounds volumes. And from those, we can then do a loop for each so that we would get all the values from it. And then from the RI index, we want to do a switch. So depending on which setting, uh, we are selecting, we're going to do a different command. So we have three entries. So we need zero, one and two over here. And over here where we simply on construction, all we want to do is set our slider values so that there would be something so that they're not at the beginning always. So let's now drag in our sliders. So we have our ambient slider, we have the effect slider and we have our music slider. From these ones, what we want to do is from every single one of these, we want to set the value. So the current value of this uh, slider. So this is not for the settings themselves. The sound is not going to change when we change these values, but the slider position is going to change. So connect every single slider to one of the targets like so. And then for all of the values, we can use the value from our array. So the array element. So let's connect that over here. And also let's connect our executions. So zero goes to the ambient slider value. Then we have the effect slider value and the music slider value. So now technically, if we would compile and save this and press play, you can see that our sound bars are at the end because that means, well, they are set to one. So to the max volume. Now back in our widget, let's now go to on click event. So find your apply button and do a on click event. Then once you've done that from the on click event, you want to create save game object and select your save game. So mine is save game settings. And then what we want to do is from the return value, we want to get our sounds volumes and we want to set the values. So we want to set array element. There we go. We want three of those since we have three settings. Then let's connect our arrays like so. Let's connect our executions in a row. So I'm going to select this one, then go to the second one, the third one, and the third one then goes to set settings, what I have for the graphics. Then for the indexes, so we want zero, we want one, and then we want two. And for the item, again, we need to bring in our sliders. So let's get our sliders like so. And then from the sliders, we can get the value and connect that into the item itself. So that's going to set the values inside of our save game. It still isn't going to change any sounds. It's only going to store those in the save so that well, it, it remembers the values. Make sure to connect all the targets and at the end it should look something like this. Then once we've set the array elements, then we want to save game to slot again using the same slot name. Once we've saved that, then we can load the save, cast to the save 
and then as the save again let's get our sounds volumes and now we are actually going to apply these settings so just like previously again we want to do a loop for each because we have multiple settings in here again we want to do a switch on string because depending on the arise element we're going to change a different sound so let's add those now from every single one of these exits we want to do a set uh, what was the name set sound mix class override and we want to do that for every single one of our indexes so let's make sure we do that so we have 0 1 and 2 connected and for all of the sound mix modifiers we want to use our new sound mix the one that we just created now for the sound classes what is very important is that we keep the same order like we did once we saved the information so 0 is the ambient 1 is the effects and 2 is the music so we want to do exactly the same thing over here so in the first one is the ambient then we have the effects and then we have the music and then we can set the volume so for the volume we can use again the array element the values that we stored in the save game so make sure we connect all of those to the volume obviously you could store more information you could change the pitch and fade in time if you want to change that but what I suggest is that you change the fade in time to zero otherwise well once you change the settings it takes like in this case it takes one second to apply those settings uh, I personally prefer them to be instant as soon as we hit the button right now we are only applying settings on click uh, also there could be an option that let's say we have the ambient and then for the ambient slider we want to have the on value changed Technically what we could do is copy this copy this node over here so the ambient node over here connect that to on changed and then connect the value directly to the volume and then it's going to change the sound as soon as we change the value but well I want to store my values so I'm going to save all of those at once but obviously if you want you could also save it in this manner as well. So once we've done this well we are basically all good. The only thing left for us to do is to apply these settings once we launch the, the game again after the restart. So let's go to our blueprints open level blueprint and over here on begin play we want to do exactly the same thing we want to load the game uh, if it exists so if the save exists then we are loading it casting to the actor and then we want to run this thing right here that we just created so let's copy all of these nodes from the apply uh, from the apply button clicked so let's paste those in over here let's connect now our target to the save game cast connect the execution and the last thing left for us to do is we need to create again at the beginning we want to set the base sound mix again we always want to do that when we are changing the sound settings so that it knows which mix it needs to change the properties for so let's create that compile and save this technically now all the settings are working they're getting saved and they're again getting reused once once we restart the game but well I don't have a way to test this so I will go to my third person character real quick create a couple of custom events well uh, keyboard events on keyboard keys one two and three and I will play some sounds once I click on any of these buttons so we can do play sound at location Let's copy a few more of these because, well, we have a couple of sounds. There we go. Now let's select our sounds. So we had the explosion. We had the, let's see, what did we have? We had the wind five and we had the music one. There it is. We have the music. Then for the location, we want to get the actor location so that we would play the, the sound in the location where we are located so that it's easier for us to hear it so now compile and save this open up our game press play open the menu and let's see first let's try with keyboard key one we have an explosion you heard it it's quite loud so let's bring the volume down apply it and you can hear it it's way way less noisy and now we can't we can't no longer hear it now let's try for the next one, which is the ambient noise. Let's bring this down. You can see it's way, way more quieter. 
and the same thing goes for the music. So that's gonna be it for today's video, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something new, the link is gonna be down in the description box to download this project if you are interested in it, make sure to subscribe to my channel, we are closing in on 5000 subscribers, join my discord if you ever need any help uh, with development in Unreal Engine 4 or maybe modeling or whatever, uh, there's quite a lot of people interested in s many different topics, so probably you will find somebody who will be able to help you if you ever run into any issues, so yeah, see you guys in the next video.